Okay, before we get into um, components in Revit, I wanted to cover cabinets and then just briefly talk about um, water closets, just because there's a few things that we need to understand. Um, and cabinets are something that are really common that we end up using a lot in Revit. So I'm going to start off here. What I have is kind of a section view, kind of a cut through um, a cabinet box or, or, or a cabinet. Now, we kind of have to understand that cabinets, the way that they're constructed is that they are built as an actual box, right? So what I'm cutting, what I'm kind of highlighting here is the plywood. Um, they're built as an actual kind of box, and then they're placed on top of these guys right here, which are really kind of the support. And we have this part here that's known as a toe kick. Okay, so this is called a toe kick. The reason what the purpose of this is so that when you're, I'm going to attempt to draw a shoe, but essentially your foot can stay, can um, can be placed right underneath the, the cabinet. Okay. But the point is that the cabinet itself is that. Okay. Oftentimes people assume that the cabinet also includes the countertop, which it doesn't. So the kitchen or dining or bathroom cabinet or vanity cabinet is the box itself. And this is what we would call what you see here is the box. We then go on and we will add the um the countertop. Okay. So we'll come in and we'll add the actual countertop on top of the cabinet. So this is the countertop. This portion that kind of lifts up is known as the backsplash. And the purpose of the backsplash is so that if you're, let's say, washing dishes in a sink, the water that comes, and let's say there's a faucet there, the water that comes down is going to splash up and you don't want this water coming in and then dripping on the backside. So what we do is we add a backsplash and that backsplash is there to kind of help any kind of splashing of the water uh, so that it stays on the actual countertop and doesn't seep in through, through the back, okay? Um, now, typically, the typically the countertop itself is one and a half inches thick. Okay, typically. Now, um, you can vary this. I've seen them down to half an inch thick countertops, three quarter inch countertops, uh, but generally speaking, it's a it's one and a half inches. Now, when we're talking about Revit it's going to be a two-step process to do countertops or to, I'm sorry, to do cabinets because we first have to add the box, okay, the cabinet box, and then we add the countertop, okay? Now, in a kitchen, the one thing to note is that the cabinets in a kitchen typically are taller than the cabinets inside of a bathroom or what we call a vanity. Um, cabinet. So if we if you hear the term vanity, um, it's essentially just referring to the cabinet inside the bathroom. So the vanity and the kitchen cabinets are not typically are not the same height. And that's going to be important when we get into Revit. So inside of a kitchen, the cabinet generally is two feet, oops, ten and a half inches for a kitchen. But for vanity, it's two feet, about five and a half inches. Okay, so you notice that one is bigger than the other. And the reason why this is important is because when we get into Revit, they're going to look exactly the same. And the only way, real way that we're going to be able to differentiate is by noting that one is taller than the other. Okay, so when we're done, once we add the countertop, right, so we add an inch and a half to this, um, you're looking at three feet for a kitchen and 
of two feet seven inches for the vanity. Okay, now these numbers are general. Um, it's not a building code. This is just kind of the custom area or the custom height. You could do custom cabinets and you could make them as big or as small as you want to. Um, but these are general numbers that we should be considerate of, okay? The other thing to note really quickly is that typically we have an overhang Okay, of the cabin of the uh, countertop, and that overhangs about one inch. Okay. Now, when we go into um, when we go into Revit and we add the countertop, it's going to look like a, just a rectangular slab. But well, it's going to help us out to understand what the back side, which is the front side, is the backsplash here, because we're going to see a double line on one side, whereas on the other side. It's just a single line. And then we also have to make sure that the back side is lined up okay, to the cabinet, while the front side is going to have this overhang. Okay, So on the front side of the countertop, that is not going to line up to the cabinet. And that's OK. That's what it should be. Okay. Um, so that's it. That's all I think we need to know for our cabinet really quickly. Because we get, I get asked this quite a bit. When we're talking about a bathroom, okay, when we add the water closet, the water closet is the toilet. So I'm going to pretend that that's a very good drawing of a toilet. When we add a, a, um, a water closet, the code is that a minimum in residential, this changes for commercial, but is 15 inches minimum. Okay, so you need 15 inches from the wall, from your finished face surface, so that's your gypsum board, your drywall, from your finished face surface to the center of the water closet needs to be 15 inches minimum. Now, 15 inches minimum is tight, okay? In commercial, it's between seven to 18 inches minimum, okay? Um, but since this is a residence project for the project that we're working on, we're going to stick to a 15 inch um, minimum. Okay, so it's all has to be only 15 inches from one side of the wall. On this side, it can be however long or whatever distance you want it to be. Okay, but water closets always have to be 15 inches minimum from one side of the wall. And that's just kind of, that's all I, I want to kind of mention about the water closets. Just because I see, um, I see these water closets pushed all the way up to the wall and we have to make sure that we have that 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 distance right there. Okay, so I think that's it. I think that's all we really need to cover before going into um, the components in Revit.